Welcome to Detangle, where we untangle the complexities of life one conversation at a time. I'm your host, Dr. Kinjal Goel. And although I've been happy recording all my podcasts, today my happiness comes with a laugh too. Yes, today we have Mr. Amit Tandon, who is a renowned Indian comedian, who is well known for his wit and humor. With a career spanning several years, he has made a significant mark in the world of stand-up comedy. His relatable humor and engaging storytelling have earned him a dedicated fan base, both in India and the Indian diaspora worldwide. Mr. Tandon's comedic talent and ability to connect with his audience make him a very prominent figure in the Indian comedy scene. Mr. Tandon is an engineer and has an MBA degree as well. But his foray into comedy won over a large and loyal fan base, including me, of course. And that is where he decided to continue and pursue a career in comedy. Welcome, Amit. I'm so glad you're with me today. Thank you, Kinjal. Thank you so much. So, well, Amit, I know you don't like this question too much, but I'm going to start uh-huh. with it anyway, because we have a large audience listening. When yeah. and how did your stand-up comedy journey start? So, I was, uh, Kinjal, I'm an engineer, MBA. Uh, I worked for a few years, then I was running an HR consulting firm. And uh, uh, 2009, you know, uh, when I was, I think, 35, 35 years old, uh, I started doing comedy as a hobby. It was purely a hobby. I was running my own HR consulting firm. We were doing very well. And uh, it it was just something by the side I wanted to do because, you know, uh, you want to, like, get, you know, switch off from your everyday work. And uh, that's where uh, stand-up came in because I used to host uh, college shows. I used to, uh, you know, uh, be part of theater when I was in college. So this was the first uh, thing that came to my mind that, okay, let's just try this. Uh, So we started going to clubs. In India, that culture was just, uh, you know, building up, uh, you know, after liberalization, the clubs, etc. had started opening up all over India. And uh, so they were open to some form of entertainment. And uh, it was purely a hobby. Hmm. There's no money exchange. You know, there'll be open mics where, you know, 10 or 15 different uh, people, most of them trying comedy for the first time, would get five minutes each. Uh, That's how, uh, you know, I started doing comedy. Uh, First two, three years was like this only. And it it was a lot of fun. I ended up meeting a lot of, different people you know because normally you meet people from your own profession or your yeah. colleagues and stuff but uh stand up in addition to you know whatever i was doing on stage opened uh you know doors to a totally new kind of friends that i made you know they were, because on the lineup there would be a 20 year old kid from college there would be a senior oh, creative right. director from an advertising company and all that so uh that kept it interesting off stage also for me. Okay, uh, so did comedy for two three years. I think 2011 12 I started uh, getting uh, you know offers to uh, you know perform at clubs for some amount of money. You'll get three thousand rupees, two thousand rupees. You know uh, wow. that happened, and then uh, uh, a year later I came to know that you know you get money uh, to perform at corporate shows also. Hmm. Okay. So then, you know, I, you know, I was running my business during the day and, uh, you know, this was, uh, you know, something that I would do in the evening. So I was running double shift for around four or five years where daytime I'll do my, uh, you know, I would run my company and in the evening, uh, you know, if I got a corporate show, I would travel for corporate shows or I would do, you know, the smaller shows at clubs and stuff. Uh, then 2016, I started releasing my videos on YouTube and, uh, after that, the scene just exploded because, you know, suddenly I, you know, I, I was selling a lot more tickets than what I was selling, you know, earlier would sell right. 50 tickets, 50 went to 500, a thousand, 2000 tickets. Uh, and 2017, finally, you know, when I did, uh, you know, I started getting calls for performing outside India. So in one year I did Australia, UK us and a host of other countries that's when i decided that this is something that i'll do full-time now 
and and, uh, and we are so grateful that, yeah because we have you now <laughs> the world was missing you yeah so, so amit i know that you write all your material yourself yeah but uh, do you ever experience a writer's block or a time when that is just not flowing how do you break out of that uh yeah uh, this sometimes there is writer's block it's uh, you know and you're always scared that you know probably you written your best material uh so it might not get better than this uh what i do to cover that is you know slowly now you know with time one i build that confidence that yes i have more material in me and second there are smaller tools you know i i uh, searched on google and uh, you know then i figured out how other people write so there are you know uh, ways of writing that one can follow you know you can make a list of things that annoyed you in the last one week that's a very basic formula of writing that always really? worked for me yeah oh fantastic so if you just think of all the thing that annoyed you in the last week if you start writing them they'll start looking funny to you so <laughs> wow so there uh, is a craft behind this art also yeah so you have to sit down and thread bear your thoughts okay you can't just say that okay this is what i felt and i'll write this but then you have to go back and see can i extend this further uh which is something that i am you know the more you write the more you uh, you know learn and the more i now what i do is i try to push myself further by saying that okay i have written a 5 minute set about this one observation can i make it 10 you know can i make it 15 okay uh is there something that i mentioned that i can go in detail about so all of that uh you know comes into play where you are like okay so if i am talking about you know getting up in the morning and you know that first 15 minutes what are the things that happen you know i brush my teeth you know uh, i'll drink water i'll do this 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 so i you know there are five things that are, that are there that i end up doing so can i do a set about toothbrush okay what kind of toothbrushes are there some people use electric ones you know versus the normal ones then the history of toothbrushes how we were forced to <clears throat> you know brush in the night and in the morning both right you know when we were kids so so as such uh, you know you have to do that as a mental exercise where you force yourself to think about every object uh as much in detail as possible that's my uh, you know way of writing so yeah i think your process is very very precious to you as an artist because it's yeah. your personal process which you have developed but also yeah. tell me uh when you deliver a set in front of an audience we see it very effortlessly coming from you but do you also practice it i mean do you practice in front of the camera do you practice in front of a mirror how does that go so the you know when you write a new set it takes like at least 20 25 performances before it becomes a tight set okay uh yeah so you know what you would normally see uh, you know on uh, youtube is a set that i performed after performing it 50 times oh you, know, you when you record it you've already <clears throat> done that set 45 50 times at least that's when you release it uh the process is when you write a new set you take it to open mics you know open mics is where any comic can go in and get 5 minutes 10 minutes you know right. uh, on the lineup the tickets are cheap people don't know who's going to perform but you know sometimes the lineup would be full of people who were fairly popular their tickets would otherwise be 1000 2000 rupees but here you probably get to see them do 10 minutes each at 300 rupees hmm. so uh, that's where we take our new sets okay so first you do uh, you know try your set a few times you record your set then you listen to it and uh, you know and figure out whether it's making sense are people laughing what are people laughing at okay Yeah, and uh, real time feedback yeah and then you know generally when i write a new show i would do a few trial shows in bombay okay because you know that i'll i'll put up shows for 20 people 30 people you know limited set of tickets on uh, you know on working days that's mm-hmm. where i try to do as many shows as possible where you know i get complete control over you know my entire show and then once you're confident that you know yes now it's one one and a half hour show uh, you know which is set that's when you start traveling the show 
that's i think one of the most fascinating things i have heard about comedy that it has such structured feedback involved at the beginning yeah it sounds amazing yeah so, this is one of those few art forms where uh, you know for example when you see a uh, you know show on netflix uh, this is something that abhishek upmanyu pointed out you know uh, to me that you know when you see everything on netflix you know you've seen stand up shows versus you know documentaries and movies and all stand up is the only art form on a platform which is brought to you after feedback from the audience correct <clears throat> because when that show is recorded i have already done it a 100 times or 50 times or 70 times and i have like gone back and changed it on the basis of how people have responded to it whereas no other art form gets that opportunity you know so yeah, in a way we are lucky you know? so the so movie you know it's not that you know they've shown it to 100 people then they change the movie you know then they change scenes they just you know they do not get that opportunity they have to just make and hope that it works so right um, that's the difference Uh, you can call it an opportunity or my next question uh, yeah. might just make it sound like hard work because uh -huh. what i see as an audience or as a psychologist mm -hmm. in your audience is yeah. every time i hear a new joke from you i laugh i laugh hard mm -hmm. but i know as a fact that you, like you said you've done it 50 60 70 times mm -hmm. so your energy doesn't change even though you have done it so many times there mm -hmm. is an honesty in your joke which is practiced so mm -hmm. how do you train for something like that where you sound fresh every time one because i love my job okay That's so true. i love getting on stage <laughs> <laughs> and making people laugh so it's never too old for me you know joke is never too old for me and uh, second what i do is you know i try to uh, you know even when the jo uh, i've been doing the same joke uh, 20 times 30 times what i try to also do is i try to play around with it a little you know which may keeps it fresh for me you know right. so sometimes i would change the emotion of the joke the way i deliver that joke i would change okay uh okay, let me see if i do this joke at a faster pace you know let me see if i do this joke in an angry voice versus doing it in a funny voice okay uh you know let me use more of my body in the joke so i keep on uh, doing that okay it helps me uh, you know one it keeps the joke fresh for me and uh, second you know uh, the thing is when whenever you're getting on stage you are always more excited you know you learn something new when you experiment because you know there are two parts to uh, stand up one is the content and second is the delivery right so even when your content is set delivery can always move right, right. so that's where you go fluid with it yeah everything. yeah you know i think you use more psychology in your work than even a psychologist does on a daily basis <laughs> i mean you've got body language you've got laughter you've got emotions you're studying yourself you are experimenting with yourself and your audience this is like a fun yeah. but intense experiment socially going on at all times yeah so it's a you know it's a very mentally exhausting process also so when i do a one and a half hour show uh, i am more tired mentally than uh, physically because you know what also happens is that i am looking at the audience right and there are 500 people sitting you know and the problem with our mentality is that you know there are 495 people laughing but we only see the five people who are not <laughs> <True>. <laughs> and there will be somebody who's on the phone or somebody yeah. who's yawning yeah so you have to like so there's always that uh, you know process going on in your mind okay what part of the room is laughing more what part is less uh, you know laughing lesser then i have to look at those people more you know maybe interact with somebody sometimes you know and there you keep on changing you know you I have to keep it dynamic so it's mentally very very exhausting as a job i think i'm sure it just sounds so amazing seeing it from your perspective because all the perspectives that we see are one sided you know from yeah. we are seeing it from one side of the stage you're seeing it from the other side of the stage and both are equally important in making something work yeah lovely so tell me one thing 
uh, have you ever had a set which has had an amazing response in some city let's say and mm-hmm. a very lukewarm response somewhere else and then have you kind of created this algorithm in your mind that this is going to work in this demographic or it's not going to work in that city is, is does this happen regularly not anymore uh, earlier it used to happen because now what happens is when people buy tickets they've already seen me on youtube okay so right. they know what to expect you know both in terms of language and you know the type of content that i do so it's it's lesser and lesser now earlier yes you had to do it more and especially for corporate shows it it's more true than you know the ticketed shows because uh, i remember i was doing a set of shows for i think standard chartered for their high net worth uh, in, you know mm. uh, customers and i had shows in jaipur chandigarh mumbai and chennai and uh, i i think bangalore and all these cities were so different because you know jaipur i had to keep the set completely hindi in uh, chennai i had to keep it completely english so so i remember i had to actually sit down go through my entire set figure out how to you know make my all my uh, punch lines in english you know i i rewrote a lot of punch lines for my chennai show you know because i normally you know my setup could be english my uh, you know punches are normally always in hindi right. so yes that you have to do but more for corporate shows than uh, you know the ticketed shows another interesting perspective i learned something new today <laughs> also now uh, amit i see a lot of people i'm sure you've seen it all of us have seen yep. it as audiences also as performers also that everyone has become extremely sensitive and the audience is just waiting to be offended I mean you yeah. could have the cleanest comedy you could have the best set you could have the best intentions at heart mm-hmm. and the easiest way to offend somebody is with a joke right somebody is always yeah. there to say sorry i'm hurt so mm. how do you deal with this how do you deal with negativity which comes your way i have stopped dealing with it you just let it be there will always be those 2% people who will get offended so you know I, slowly now i've realized that you know let's just live with it let's just avoid those uh, comments because if you answer them then they are getting what they want they're engaging right uh, so i just don't give that to them i don't give them attention anymore um, it's taken a while to get to get there but uh, i i just don't uh, you know read those comments or even if i read them i just delete them from my mind Mm, I like the idea of deleting it from your mind because, yeah, I mean, you your art and your craft is so precious to you. It's something that you yeah. need to keep safe and secure. So I think well done. Absolutely. Also, tell me, I've heard something very interesting from you in our yeah. previous conversation, which I would love to talk to you about. Yeah. This comedy writing workshop, the Charlie yeah. Spetalis one. Please uh-huh. tell us something about it. So it's a, pa- a passion project. Uh, you know what I've uh, you know felt. you know when i've gone to open mics normally is that uh, you know, most of the performers are generally in their 20s okay the reason is they have more time okay and uh, you know they have more bandwidth more freedom you know uh, to go out and do stuff that they want to uh, but i think there's a large population in their 40s you know in our generation for example i am 48 mm-hmm. uh, who were never able to pursue their uh, you know their passions because of you know getting married because of family pressures you know you get married then you got into a job because in our time you know parents were not that supportive of their passion of the passion of their kids uh so that's where i decided to start an open mic only for people above the age of 40 so i said why don't you come try your material and then i started doing workshops where you know all the people above 40 are eligible to uh, you know join in uh, where i sit with them for two or three days you know six to seven hours uh, of workshops where uh, i help them understand how to write you know i take them through the entire process of comedy writing creating content because for me also you know another thing that i know is that you know 20 year old can come 5 days a week to attend an open mic and improve his skill set right. but a 40 year old has too many you know uh, 
things going on at his end there are too many commitments you know there's a child's you know birthday party you know you have to go back and teach your kids you know you have to take care of your parents you know office mm-hmm. issues and all of that so they have lesser time to hone their craft on stage so this workshop is intended to you know shorten that time period that it would take you normally to get to a certain level so the journey that would normally take you 3 years you know i'm trying to bring it down to 1 year for people above the age of 40 and i think another thing that should happen you know hopefully is that you get a totally new kind of voice in comedy when that you get correct. people the experience before. brings a very different perspective absolutely so the kind of people that we are getting in these workshops are you know there are investment bankers there are uh, you know uh, the uh, people from businessman background there are uh, you know directors of movies we had arya babbar coming in who's been an actor for such a long time raj babbar sir yeah he came in and you know he wants to attend the workshop then we had doctors you know uh, chartered accountants all kinds of people who've coming who are coming in and the interesting thing is the they've lived a life Right. So their observation is a lot more than somebody who's just lived maybe half their life. Absolutely, you know. So their stories are so rich, but it's just that those stories are not getting stage because they do not get that opportunity, you know. So that's what this, uh, you know, that this entire project Charlie's Petalis is about, you know, trying to create opportunities for people above the age of forty to come in and, you know, even if they don't want to pursue it as a profession. even if they just want to do it as you know something that takes them away from their daily life i'm very happy with it but we are already getting comics out uh, of that circuit who are doing open mics who started getting on lineups you know one of the ladies uh, chandrika rao she's an ngo worker and she actually opened a show for me so imagine she started 6 months ago and she opened a show in front of a thousand people for me in mumbai and geo drive how fabulous how fabulous is so you know it's uh, it's it's very satisfying to see that happening for you know people above the age because otherwise sometimes you'll just put the shutter down so that you know i'm already at a particular age i don't know how much i can pursue my old dreams or you know pursue my new passions but that's what we are trying to do here you know let's just open that door once see what we can do that's And- so so beautiful <laughs> now you're actually creating a therapeutic environment which is also creative So basically, uh, when we say creativity is intelligence having fun, and comedy mm-hmm. is creativity having fun, so mm-hmm. you've created an environment where people can not just find a happy place, but also grow in it if they want to. So it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's good to see some of them are like started making money also because of it. So it's very satisfying. <laughs> so nice, na, to be a mentor. I mean, you've gone so far. You've come literally so far from. where you started to where you've come to mm-hmm. how you're hand holding people for the future i think it's it shows your commitment to your art that you want to not just be the best yourself but also encourage others to be the best form of themselves yeah the, see the thing is comedy has given me a lot kinjal so it's more like giving it back you know that's so that that's what this this is about how nice i i really hope it goes <laughs> a long way and i hope we can Thank help you. you push it further because a lot of people need to know about this Mm-hmm. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who will find out about this through the podcast and want to look it up. So we'll definitely sure. add a link also. Sure. Also, tell me now uh, a very personal question, Amit. Not as yeah. a comedian, but just human to human. Yeah. Uh, we always ask people to have a first aid kit in the house, right? We ask them to mm-hmm. keep band aids, Savlon, some painkillers, so that if there is any wound from the day, you can take care of it mm-hmm. and let it heal over time. I also ask my podcast guests that if you were to have a mental first aid kit in your house, a little mm-hmm. box in which you could put things that you like, which will always make you happy. If you know, let's say you've had a bad day or you fought with a friend, there's been some emotional trauma, which is you know small trauma, but you want mm-hmm. to feel better. So let's say you want to make a box. What would you put mm-hmm. in it? uh what i do is you know when i feel uh, down i you know normally talk to myself so for me this box is about uh all the memories uh, you know more than memories you know it's like uh that box more has uh, you know has more of my expectations in life okay that i had 20 years ago hmm. okay 
and then i look at myself you know i start talking to myself that okay so when i was 25 years old uh what did i think i can achieve in life okay how much money what car you know or you know would i be able to buy a house and all of that and you know then i tell myself that you know i am doing way better than what i expected to so there is no reason <laughs> wow Hey, this is a fantastic perspective. I must tell you, Amit, this is the most unique answer this question has brought on so far. So there is not really a reason for me to be down and out, you know, uh, in in life, uh, you know, the, you know, to feel bad about anything. I'm doing way better than what the 25 year old Amit dreamt of. So it it helps me a lot. It helps me a lot. Also, yeah, that really sounds fantastic because actually gratitude is the attitude that you have kind of built mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. once you look into yourself and say okay i'm grateful i'm sure yeah. a lot of pains ease away on their own absolutely absolutely you you know you it keeps you know if you remember the old expectations of your life they keep a check on you you know you are always uh, you know grounded in that sense that okay you're doing better than what you expected so shut up and don't cry about that you know small amount of money that you lost or you know uh, whatever you've been through this and with the relationships it's entirely different for me it's very clear that you know any relationship there will always be a fight that will happen True. you know whether it's with your parents you will always fight you know kids you will fight you know with your wife you will fight with friends also there'll be issues uh, and i look at it more like you know my perspective here is that you know it's like a crime scene a fight okay. okay so the first you know in police terms they say the first 24 hours are very important in right. a crime right you heard the term so the, similarly in a fight fight is not a problem but the next 24 hours are very important what do you do after the fight do you stop talking to each other and make assumptions and go and bitch to somebody else about it or you you know go back and approach the same person and try to figure it out okay okay so wherever you, so my thing is let's just you know have that half an hour of cooling period then let's just start talking and it always sort you know is sorted out so for I me this analogy <laughs> beautiful <laughs> you have made a fight into a crime scene and solved it like a detective ha <laughs> this thing is if you just leave it out there you know then it keeps on getting bad because the more you know if you don't talk to each other and just you know keep on thinking about that fight then you keep on making each other a villain more and more you know you start hating each other more that's what i think you know so Absolutely. i try to resolve in the first 24 hours fantastic <laughs> now uh, before uh, before i come to the last segment Hmm. I always leave the floor open or the stage open or the set open for you to ask me a question as a psychologist. Yeah, uh if I have to ask you I I think what I would like to know is that when when you've been through so many uh you know uh if I may call them patients mm-hmm. um I'm sure it must be very exhausting. It no? is. So, yes. Do you need a therapist yourself? <laughs> so you're right. You know, in fact, I'm. I'll tell you. Uh, it is a part of protocol amongst mm-hmm. most psychologists that we mm-hmm. also undertake therapy at least twice a month. So okay. you're right. I also see a therapist, not just for my clients or for my work, but also to go through my life without. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't need to do it alone. So, like I tell mm-hmm. people, you go to the gym even if you're not obese. You're trying to build muscle. so that's mm-hmm. how psychotherapy is if you have access to a good therapist it mm-hmm. can help you build that mental resilience before your mind breaks down mm-hmm. and yes we have bad days yes we have our own issues mm-hmm. although it's not just uh, i think for me my healing part is my clients or my patients because okay. when i see somebody overcome an issue when i see somebody gain insight mm-hmm. when i see someone just you know embrace life once again and come back with a smile and say you know what i'm going mm-hmm. to live it and mm-hmm. that's what makes my day my whole week my year worth it because i know mm-hmm. someone somewhere is happy today yeah so yes that's how it goes for me 
that's nice that's nice yeah if you made somebody's day better yeah it makes your day better anyway absolutely mm-hmm. and of course like i told you what my mom does is every time she knows that i'm having a busy day or if i'm low for some reason she sends me a youtube link of your jokes <laughs> and that is my mom's love language that you know this is going to make you feel happy she doesn't say anything with it she just sends mm-hmm. me a link uh-huh. and i play it and i say okay someone out there cares about it. <laughs> it's a way of showing you care. yeah lovely i think uh, i've had the most fun recording this podcast with you amit because Thank you, uh, comedy is fun but it's not just fun comedy is a mm-hmm. talent but it's a lot of hard work there are a couple mm-hmm. of takeaways i have from your conversation with me one i should never offend you because i'm going to be in your joke next <laughs> second if i have fought with you i know you're going to resolve it in the next 24 hours i'm <laughs> also very very grateful for all the work that you're doing in the scene of comedy to make it better to take it forward and to help people who never had a voice earlier so from all of us i wish you all the very best for your chalis petalis project and for all thank your you shows so that are you. coming up thank you thank you it's been lovely thank you so much amit thanks a lot kinjal thank you, thank you.